So the next big question then that they deal with is uh, apologetics and philosophy, right? And uh, they, they, they've entitled this particular section in this chapter, The Constructive Use of Philosophy. So Geisler uh, and co-author Paul Feinberg in their book asserts that philosophy serves in the construction of the Christian system and in the refutation of contrary views. So they quote, with approval, C.S. Lewis, uh, his statement that good philosophy must exist if for no other reason, because bad philosophy needs to be answered. <laughs> so philosophy is the necessary prerequisite to systematic theology, which we saw uh, just previously, and to apologetics, because both require the philosophical tools of clear, consistent, and correct thinking. So philosophy is... Um, you know, is foundational, again, for uh, apologetics, just like apologetics is foundation for theology. So really, you have philosophy, apologetics, and then theology is what is the stack that they're working on. <laughs> so apologetics involves the construction of good arguments or the supplying of good evidence and justification for the basic truths of Christianity. Mm -hmm. So philosophy is, is uh, uh, foundational for a, a good apologetics is the argument here. You need to be able to think clearly. You need to be able to think consistently. You need to have cr uh, correct thinking uh, in order to for apologetics to be uh, uh, effective. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, Stuart Hackett, an evangelical philosopher whose students include William Lane like Craig, identified philosophy with apologetics perhaps as forcefully as anyone has. Hackett notes that the philosophy deals with such questions as the possibility of knowledge. There's our epistemology, our theory of, of how we know things, the ultimate nature of reality, metaphysics, and our proper conduct in light of reality, ethics. Man, it seems like we're all <laughs> pulling from the same same three here. It's yeah. It's, it's crazy that this is a focus uh, when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about God who uh, made everything and uh, thinks consistent thoughts and uh, requires us to do certain actions. Well, he then suggests that the apologetics uh, that apologetics also seeks to defend a particular set of answers to these questions. In the broad sense, apologetics is practically coextensive with the whole philosophical enterprise. So what we say about God affects uh, what we know about Schrodinger's cat. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's mixed in there with everything. So again, um, you know, uh, different, uh, different schools of thought for apologetics could levy certain, um, uh, inaccurate claims against, uh, other approaches. Uh, but, uh, the classical model isn't just, um, uh, dividing the, the, um, the scope of, of nature to say these things are of gods and these things are of philosophy that we can kind of know. Uh, by setting them off to the side. That, that's, it's not at least what ha uh, Hackett is saying. Right. And so, that, so that's the approach with regard to classical apologetics uh, regarding philosophy. They would argue what we would suggest, or at least assume that you need to know a little bit of philosophy in order to do uh, uh, apologetics correctly, right? Or to be effective in apologetics. Mm -hmm. So that's philosophy and apologetics. Mm 